The following presentation has been closed captioned. This allosaur was one of the most vicious killers in the entire age of dinosaurs. This great gentle giant, a barosaur, was five stories tall. Both once roamed this vast Wyoming prairie during what is known as the Jurassic era, the golden age of giants. And today, these are among the richest fields of dinosaur bones in the world. The reason we care about dinosaurs is because they're nature's special effects. They're real monsters. They really did evolve. And kids in kindergarten know the difference between dragons, which are made up, and dinosaurs, which are real. That's pretty irresistible. When I was learning the old dogma, what I call the dinosaur orthodoxy, everyone stressed that dinosaurs were stupid, slow, stupid, clumsy. In fact, the cat scanning we've done of meat-eating dinosaurs, and small plant eaters too, shows a lot of them had the best mental equipment that had evolved. Our ancestors were chased around by dinosaurs who were faster, had bigger hearts, better lungs, and who were smarter, much smarter. If you're surprised by that statement, Welcome to the world of Bob Bakker. He has been challenging the conventional wisdom about dinosaurs and radically changing our understanding of them ever since he was a college student three decades ago. When I went to Yale in the 60s, paleontology was in a very strange state. And people said, dinosaurs, schminosaurs, they're boring, kids like them, everything's been found out, they're big, they're hard to store, they take forever to dig up, don't do them! It was in the 60s that everything I had learned about dinosaurs proved to be, well, bunk, just wrong. Well, it turned out people had misunderstood dinosaurs and the giant sea reptiles that occupied the ocean at the same time. Dinosaurs were much more interesting than people had told me. And they continue to give us surprise after surprise after surprise. While still at Yale, Bakker struck at the very heart of our accepted wisdom about dinosaurs. Most people still have the idea that dinosaurs were slow, giant lizards, cold-blooded reptiles. But Bakker theorized they were warm-blooded, highly evolved animals with a light, fragile anatomy of birds. If you look at Brontosaurus, look at a picture, a good one, it seems to be very thickly built, especially the neck. Neck is uh, four, five, six feet thick. You look at it and you say, that doesn't look like a bird. Then you hold these fossil bones in your hands. You realize these giant four foot wide pieces of backbone are hollow. They're totally hollow. Birds have a very clever economical way of building their bodies. They build bones around air chambers. Dinosaurs were built that way. Brontosaurus was not a 20 ton slow moving lizard. Brontosaurus was a 40,000 pound turkey from hell. Now I wrote an article about cat scanning dinosaur heads for Discover. And the reason I did that was CAT scanning lets you see inside the brain, inside the canals or nerves of a Tyrannosaurus rex. And when you do that, you can put the wires back. You can rewire your T-Rex. You can see how each nerve left the brain, went to the nose or the jaws or the, the end of the snout. And the wiring pattern that comes out of a T-Rex CAT scan doesn't look like a lizard and doesn't look like a crocodile. It's exactly like a bird. Exactly. Bakker's newest and most controversial dinosaur theory concerns the fate of dinosaurs and why they became extinct. He believes the truth may be found in these Wyoming rocks, where, as happened many times during the age of dinosaurs, entire species of the great beasts died out suddenly, disappeared. If you look at the environment here, preserved in these rocks, you can't see any good reason to go extinct. If anything, the environment was easier than it had been. There was plenty of food. You can find no reason to go extinct and yet great extinctions are happening. That's one of the great paradoxes of geological history. It looks like something terrible was, has happened. I can't 
can't see the evidence. But something curious did happen. The Jurassic giants died out, became extinct. Yet the smaller, weaker animals thrived. It's not everybody. On land, it's actually only one or two percent of the critters. It's nothing little, nothing that lived in fresh water, no crocs, no turtles, just the big active animals. 140 million years ago, much of the northern hemisphere was covered by water. Every time there were extinctions on land, there were land bridges being formed because shallow seas would drain away, seas that had separated the continents, and animal species that had evolved separately could now move. Big animals are always spreading. They're pushing their boundaries. Elephant populations want to spread across Africa. Buffalo populations in, the, in America 100 years ago were spreading everywhere they could go. The only way to stop a big animal from spreading is an ocean. Drain the ocean, they're going to spread. Spreading is a dangerous thing to do. If you spread, you meet new predators, new competitors. You meet new diseases, which is the real dangerous thing. That's probably what did it, is spreading across dried out land bridges. It's the big animals that are vulnerable to their own wanderlust, their own uh, desire to conquer new territory. It's to these hills called Como Bluff that Bob Baca returns year after year. And year after year, day after day, Como Bluff yields its secrets about the Jurassic dinosaurs. This is a very big one. Bigger than anyone I've seen, actually. I was walking, you know, 20 feet in that direction. In the corner of my eye, I saw bump, 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 making this, this arch. I knew right away it was a bloody, big, nearly complete fish lizard. Since 1974, I've been walking around here. Have you ever seen anything on the ground to compare with that? Nope. I'm not easily impressed. I am deeply impressed now. I've always said, I've always told my students, people taking my class, don't look for something. Just expect the unexpected. Look at the corner of your eyes. And I saw this literally at the corner of my eye. Every spring as the as the rain washes down these slopes, it cuts a little further into the rock, erodes out more bones, and that's been going on for a couple thousand years or longer. I just like looking, and I just like feeling the ichthyosaur, like right there where the rib meets the backbone, and the joint is in place. You can just imagine that rib cage expanding as this ichthyosaur porpoise grabbed a breath and went down again. That's neat. If you know how to read them, these dinosaur fossils on the Wyoming prairie can be eloquent witnesses to the history of the great age of dinosaurs. They also can be eloquent observers of our own history. The total span of all the ages of dinosaurs stacked one after the other is about 165 million years long. The age of mammal dominance, when mammals became big, took over the world, it's only 65 million. So the dinosaurs reigned for over twice as long as we furry, warm-blooded mammalia have reigned. If we do half as good, we'll be doing well. We'll be doing well. The proceeding is from the pages of Discover Magazine, America's leading science monthly.